Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. This is Jeremiah J. Man Manero, J. Man Speaks. Welcome to another great episode of Ask the Experts, Anything Meaningful Friday, also known as A-Team Friday. Today we have a doozy for you. We're talking about predictive analytics, data, and what everybody's favorite thing that I hear about almost every day, how to get sellers now. Get sellers now. We're going to be launching a new product, but first we want to bring in people who are smarter than us to explain it to you in greater detail. So it's my pleasure to introduce... Ian Coggins. Ian, thank you for being here today, sir. We appreciate you. I'm about smarter, maybe younger. I'm Def- maybe younger. I, Def- I, I would say younger and smarter, trust me, <laughs> when I tell you. Uh, we'll give you a quick round of applause here. Uh, there we go. Uh, well, tell us a little bit about uh, who you are and, and the company that you work for so that we can kind of edify you a little bit. Sure. So my name is Ian Coggins. I'm the strategic account executive at Revaluate. Um, grew up in the Midwest and moved out to Denver and love every minute of it out here in the mountains. Um, what draw me to, you know, wanting to work with Revaluate, you know, I've been in the industry for, you know, four or five years now and kind of started with, you know, the rental side of things and have moved since to buyer, sellers, technology, etc. And what really drove me to Revaluate is, how simple yet powerful it is because at the end of the day you know we don't have to reinvent the wheel here and that's exactly what we you know that's exactly what the mantra we focused on is is you know we've taken an idea at its core that is fundamental for agents to follow and we have applied you know, a little a little technical spin to it a little high tech twist but it's super easy to understand and super easy to implement but it's going to grow an agent's reach and database in, instrumental so yeah and and it's it's so great because we always talk about um you know agents and they're like man with the inventory's record lows and you're like well what are you mm-hmm. doing uh, i'm sitting at the office and i'm waiting for somebody to call you know <laughs> or, or just just <laughs> blindly cold calling and i think mm-hmm. it, we're, we're in such a smart with, with predictive analytics and and the intelligence that's out there and and it's all about the data where you can work smarter, right? I mean, isn't that what it's kind of all about? Work smarter so you know who to, out of my entire database, because I think some of us were brought up or grew, we grew up the wrong way in real estate where they said, add everybody in there, mm-hmm. right? Everybody. You meet a guy in the corner, hey, man, can I add you to my database? doesn't matter who it is. And I think mm-hmm. now that's kind of changing. That's quality over quantity, right? Yep. Work smarter, not harder. That's the... That's the idea here. I mean, it, it's not to say you shouldn't work hard, but if you're apl- applying it to the right people at the right time, it's all, you know, you're doing it in vain. So we want to make sure that agents are recognizing, A, that your time is valuable, first and foremost. So you need to be using that time effectively and efficiently. Okay. Um, so do we want to go right to the shared screen? We kind of get started and we'll kind of walk us through it? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Let's, let's see if we did this right because we – all right. I think this is – no, wait, is this my presentation? No, hold on. Oh, hold on one minute. Keep segueing as we attempt to do this. You guys, uh, if you didn't know, this is my Cookie Monster shirt. I decided to wear that today because, you know, I, I love cookies, and that's what matters. Bring it over here. Boom. Okay, so that should be your screen. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, revaluate. What I want to talk to you about today is our core product that we have here at Revaluate. And what we are doing with this core product is revealing who is most likely to move from within your database over a six month period. Now, the way we do that, and I'm gonna throw a bunch of buzzwords at you, is by using artificial intelligence, machine learning algorithms. What you need to understand about that, you know, I, I love to explain machine learning algorithms as I would a, you know, as a student in kindergarten. So on the first day, you know, you go to, you go to school, student starts to learn their ABCs. Now, do they just stop going to school after that? No. Now they know their ABCs. Let's build some words. They know some words. Let's build some sentences. They know some sentences. Let's write a book. Same thing with, with our data. What we're going to do is monitor contacts on a nightly basis and learn their ABCs, take those ABCs and put them in the words, in the sentences, into stories, into novels, so that we can reveal to you which of them are most likely to move within a six month window. Now, how we do this is pretty unique. So we here at Revaluator under the mantra that people move 
not houses. And I've been, it's been pointed out to me that tiny houses do in fact move sometimes with people. So that's technically not true <laughs> if you have a tiny home. But if right. your home is not on a trailer, it does apply. So the big, the big idea here is that, you know, what drives people to move? Well, historically, it has been life events. What's going on in a person's life that may or may not determine they are likely to move? in the next six months. These would include things like marriages, births, divorces, graduations. We've actually made it easy to remember and understand. We made a nice alliteration. The day 90s. The it used to be yeah. 60s. I had an old video, I guess, that I used not too long ago where it was diapers, diamonds, death, divorce, diplomas, and the daily grind because it was worth yep. it, right? right? Um, so I like yep. it. Downsizing, discretionary income, and mm -hmm. dumpsters. All right. Let's, dumpsters. Let's, Dumpsters yeah. is an interesting one. So that's a very, very reliable indicator of whether or not someone's going to move in the next six months. And you're like, at first thought, you're like, why? You know, <laughs> but when you think about it, dumpsters out front of the house, why is there a giant dumpster out front of the house? Well, there's only a couple of reasons that that could be, you know, one, they're renovating the place. Maybe it's an estate sale. Maybe there was a death in the family and they're cleaning out the house. There's not many other reasons why a dumpster would be out in front of the house. And it's often a very reliable indicator. Just as these other data Ds, when you have, you know, diapers for a new birth, diamonds for a marriage, um, diplomas for graduation, the downsizing, discretionary income, daily grind, those all apply to, let's say, changes in job, changes in income, possible retirement, any of those major life events. Now, how do we know someone's going through a life event short of spying on them? Right, you know, tapping, their, tapping, their right. <laughs> tapping into the phones and, you know, doing our best Edward Snowden impression. So what are we actually doing? What we do is we take a contact's email address and we match it up against data from a number of different sources. Now, if you wanted to, you know, go at a really high level to describe those sources, this would include things like social media data, government census information. Um, but the two big ones are search data and spending data. So search data, anything you look for on your phone, your tablet and desktop, in case you didn't already know, people know what you're looking for. Unless you happen to understand, you know, how to run VPNs and how to mask your identity online, people know what you're searching for, and that's just how it goes. Now, that can be a good thing, and actually it is a great thing. I've had many, many times where ads have been targeted to me based on things that I was searching for that I would not have found otherwise if not for those <laughs> algorithms catching them. Um, I have just telling J-Man that I have a baby coming here soon. Um, a couple weeks and my um, wife sometimes can't sleep. So she'll sit up and Google some things on Amazon, maybe throw it in the cart. So I see it in the morning, you know, like, so I'll buy it for same type of thing. You're staying up late, Googling stuff. You get the next morning and all of a sudden you got ads on Facebook directly towards those items you were Googling. Same type of data, credit card spending data. So this is another cool one. So next time you get a credit card in the mail, I would encourage you to pull up the uh, little booklet that's inside of it. It's like a tiny little booklet that's maybe yay big, but it's got a million words on it because they're written as small as possible. And yeah. it goes over every single data point that they can look for. They are relative to this, looking at these changes in spending habits, you know, increases and decreases in spending, where they're being spent at, where that money's being spent. All of those data points offer us insights as to whether or not someone is going through a major life event. Now, and that's, that's monitored like on a, on a, you said daily basis, like every day it's kind of Correct. like scouring, going, okay, what's going on in all these people? Okay. All right. That's awesome. Correct. So it's constantly monitoring these contacts. It's constantly looking for, you know, changes in their uh, history, in their data to update their scores. And that's where the machine learning aspect comes of it comes in. And I'll actually, um, Put a pin in that for one moment because I want to put that as part of the revaluate lead flow. And this helps to illustrate how easy this process can be. So first and foremost, what we want to do is obviously get contacts into, you know, into revaluate. And how that works is we could upload some spreadsheets that someone may have. We could integrate into their, you know, their Gmail, their Outlook, their CRM. Um, bottom line being that we want to get as many contacts as we can that are in your circle, you know, into Revaluate so that we can monitor them. Now, before we start monitoring, we're going to help you out a little bit with a data detox. 
And what this detox does is it goes through really quickly, checks for any duplicates, any fake emails, you know, like John Doe at Gmail, here for the free cookies at Yahoo, right, from the open houses, any other industry professionals, anyone whose score might be, you know, messed up because of what they look for. Like, for instance, me, my score is always listed as very high because all I do is real estate. So that's just how that, you know, that does happen. It's not very, you know, it's not aimed towards predicting real estate agents and title reps and mortgage lenders. So we get rid of those on our end. So A, they're not clogging up your pipeline. And yeah. B, you're not paying the monitor, plain and simple. That process takes a couple hours max, not a very long process. But once that's done, we can start the profile building. This is where the scoring comes into play. So we meet your contacts for the first time. We see their email address. We send out calls to all of our data providers saying, all right, we got some contacts here. We need to gather some more data. We need to learn more about them. And over the next 48 hours, once you have started, we take a crash course on John and Jane Doe. We learn everything we can about them so we can build initial profile and give them an initial score uh, based on their propensity to move. Now, the score is where the simplicity is underlined most. So rather than saying, you know, here's a bunch of flags, they may be likely to move thanks to 50 out of 63 flags or any other arbitrary thing like that, we've got a nice, easy to understand scoring scale. It is based on a scale of zero to 100. Each contact will be scored on that scale. Anyone who comes in at 80 and above will be deemed a very likely mover. Okay. These are going to be the top tier leads, the, the ones that you want to be reaching out to most as they are the most likely to move in the next six months. This speaks to what uh, Jamin was talking about earlier, where it's important to be reaching out to the right people at the right time rather than just doing this widespread shotgun approach. We can hyper precise, you know, hyper focus on these top 6% or so of contacts that are likely to move over the next six months because those are going to give you the best return on your investment, on your marketing dollar. Now, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, man, you're good. You were predicting okay. that I was about to say something. Uh, yeah, it felt like it. <laughs> uh, I, I was just thinking, like, uh, in my experience with this, it, it, it is so accurate. And it's almost like when you're, when you're driving and Waze tells you, this is how you should go. But you're like, no, no, it's not. I know how I should go. And you're always late because you didn't listen to the computer. And I, I, I was the same way. Like, it scores something high in, in, in my database. I'm like, man, this guy's not moving. Or it's somebody that I knew from 20 years ago. We had this mental picture of who they were way back when. And like, man, that guy was the, the baddest dude in my high school. He's never buying a house. But now he's making six figures. He's, you know, he's, he's living, living the good life. So it's, it's, it is so accurate. And, and, and the, data, the data never lies. Trust the data. Such a good point. Yeah, and we actually, it's funny you mention that because we had a person, you know, we ask about our client successes just to keep in touch with them, keep active, make sure they they have everything they need. And someone shared with us that within their first couple months, they had a success that was really unique that they you know weren't expecting. So they had someone pop up as a very likely mover and they said, no way. You know, they moved literally 10 months ago. They're not moving. Um, they just moved. It's probably catching some residual data or something like that. Um, what actually happened was they got a new job offering in New Mexico. They were currently in, they were at the time in Texas and their score got shot up because something had changed in their habits. So we caught that and they, he reached out. They said, yeah, actually we have to move. I know it's only been 10 months, but we got to move. We got to move for our work. He never would have reached out otherwise. Why would he have? Um, he would have just thought, okay, they moved pretty recently. I can check up on them every once in a while, but they're not moving anytime soon. But the data caught that. No one's going to be looking at those, you know, people who just moved in the last year, maybe in the last two years, just because we've been programmed to think, oh, they're not going to move, you know, unless they've been there for at least three or five or seven years, whatever the market says. And that's just not the case. Right. We, we got a question from Victor Rivera out of San Antonio, Texas, but he's in Costa Rica now. He's relocated there. Awesome. Uh, we would have maybe caught that after he went on a trip and then started searching real estate in Costa Rica. <laughs> I could have referred him to somebody there. Uh, but he, his question is, is it a, uh, the data scrub, is it a manual process or is it 
automated? I'm guessing it's so, maybe the database and or the the data that comes in on the people. Yeah, so when we scrub a database to you know get rid of the duplicates and things like that, it starts as an automated process. As any process, it is imperfect, so we may or may not miss some contacts that you think are not good leads, or we may notice along the along the way and point out to you. It's not a one of and then it's done. If you're, let's say you get a lead and it comes in and it's like, oh, well, that's actually a title rep or that's a, another agent. That's okay. We go on the honor system. Just tell us it was an agent. We'll flag them. You'll never have to pay to monitor them again and they'll never pop up for you again. So while we do automate it as much as we can, we allow for people to adjust it as they see fit since, you know, we're not going to catch everything. But that is a great question. Uh, we want to make sure that you know, if you happen to find someone or we happen to find someone, we bring it to your attention and say, hey, I don't I don't think these are actually, you know, the best leads right here. I think these five maybe agents or fake emails. What do you think? So uh, good question. And it, he has a follow up. It says on your scoring can here, I'll bring it up on the screen. But uh, on your scoring, can, can, cert, can I select certain life events for the international second home market, i.e. retirement, downsizing, empty nesters? I think you're already tracking that, right? Um, when we yeah. Down yeah, so we are already that. tracking stuff like that stuff like that. We don't, you know, select like I only want divorces or births or graduations for a security reasons, b ethical reasons, um, because we want to protect not just consumers, but also agents themselves. Having that type of data is powerful. Now, theoretically speaking, um, we can provide that data to people legally. Legally speaking, we can say, hey, John and Jane are getting a divorce. You should reach out based on our data. We could legally tell you that. Ethically, we don't feel it's appropriate to say right. that. Um, nor do we want you calling them and saying, hey, what's up, John? I heard you're uh, getting a divorce. You want to you wanna move here or what? Right. Wouldn't recommend it. Right. I mean, I've, I've seen crazier things work, but wouldn't recommend it. Um, that's all about – that's part of our you know, focus on being you know, committed to consumer privacy and being – you know proactive in what we do everything that we have a, assigned to our product you know as far as privacy goes and consumer data protection goes is not only compliant with what is expected in the united states today but it's what we expect will be required in 20 years because we want to future proof this product for everybody right okay great questions uh, victor thank you keep them coming everybody absolutely absolutely um Going back to, you know, how the scoring system works, you know, we have these people coming in at 80 and above. They're very likely movers. Um, these scores are monitored on a nightly basis, so they are going to change on a nightly basis. Now, for the majority, they're not going to change very much, obviously, unless a major life event has happened. We wouldn't expect them to change too dramatically. But when that happens, we're not afraid to shoot a score up. We're not afraid to put them from a 20 to an 80 overnight if that's what the data dictates. We can send email alerts to that effect, letting you know that John Doe's now an 80. We can send a text alert. Um, we'll have information available in the dashboard, um, wherein – actually, can I pull up the dashboard? Is that all right, J-Man? Yeah, you could do whatever you I'm sharing your screen. Oh, so, so we'll um, pull up that information so you're able to see all of these scores, to see who the very likely movers are. If you happen to you know, want to integrate this into perhaps your – follow-up boss or whatever CRM you're using, same thing. We can apply the scores into your CRM, either through direct integration or through Zapier. Um, we're able to do both of those things. The bottom line of that being, we're going to give you ample opportunity to not only be aware of these score changes, but to ensure that you're reaching out to them as soon as possible. Because what we're really trying to do there is ensure that you're the first person that reaches out since we know that people work with the first or second agent, was it nine out of 10 times? So yep. that's what we want to focus in on. That's what we want to be of the most importance. Yeah, it's so and nice now, to see to see the dashboard because like so the arrows this way mean they, they, this guy stayed the same or this lady Jen Bo Pre right, but then the up arrow obviously they've gone up. Does it if if Mike Swisher went up more than Catherine did overnight? Is that why he's ranked higher than Catherine, or is this kind of like there's they're tied? For, so you see 97 on the screen, technically on the back end, and I haven't counted the numbers recently. We actually have decimal points that I think go 8 to 10. Like the scores are actually like 97.8635366. Uh, you guys don't need to see that. Okay. That's yeah. just the in-depth nature of how precise this process is. Love it. Yeah. Um, 
so we can see those little things. So that's what that attributes to. I wouldn't get too caught up on say, you know, if Mike was 97, Catherine's 96, I wouldn't say, okay, Mike's a little bit more likely. It's not really worth viewing it like that. It's more viewing it as, okay, this segment right here, this top tier, these very likely movers, these are the ones that I want to focus in on. These are going to be the best. Less so than, okay, this is a 97, this is a 96, I'll hit this first and second. Um, yeah. It's better to view it as a segment rather than a straight up ranking. Segment. Well, and it, it's it's so great because it kind of gives you an action plan. You, you come into the office, you start your day. Those of you who don't like prospecting, aren't doing prospecting, these are people that are in your database that you should already know. So it's an easier conversation rather than, you know, using the old Red X leads or just picking up the phone book. <laughs> Some people still do that. You know, if you have a list of that, that you're working from, these are people that should, hey, hey, Mike, it's J-Man. Hey, my, and then have a conversation. It's a, it's a much warmer lead, but it gives you a hit list, if you will, uh, first thing in the morning. Rather than hopping on social media, you can talk to some clients and see what's going on. Exactly, and find out what's going on in their life because people love to share, and they love to share when these major life events are happening. And once you got that, I love to fish. So once you got that hook set, you set it. There it is. That's it. It's done. <laughs> the fight is on to just get them to the boat as quick as possible, right? So um, people love to share those events, and it's a great way to know who to be reaching out to because you know you've had those successes before where you called someone and they're like, wow, what a coincidence. I'm actually going to be moving here soon. What if it's not a coincidence? What if we're actually going to put you in front of them? For right. Them so you don't have to hope on coincidences. <laughs> uh, that's really what's going to happen there. Now, Here's where we get you know a little bit a little bit nerdy a little bit dorky because I got some numbers I want to share. Yes. Um, but I love this. I love this. I love the okay. the proof of the pudding here. So we have a verified accuracy rating, which is something that nobody in our industry can claim besides us. Now, how we did that, how we got that verified accuracy, is by doing an independent study through Altos Research. You may have heard of them before. They basically you know have access to MLS data across the country. And as you can imagine, there are a lot of MLSs and thus a lot of data attached to them. They tested our leads, our very likely movers, against MLS listings to see how many of them ended up listing. They found that one out of five of the people we considered very likely movers ended up listing a property on an MLS nationwide during the six month frame. Internally, our customers share that that number can be as high as 40%. Of, wow. of very likely movers end up moving. Now, something worth noting, you know, I don't want to say you're going to have 40%. I don't want to say that because we do have lots of users. We have lots of people in different industries. We're actually not just exclusive to real estate. We have people in the mortgage space. We have advertisers. We have channel partners. So there are different successes for them. For instance, mortgage has access to refis. And if you're, you know, if you've paid attention, you probably saw that refis are basically pr money printers, right? So they've been doing a pretty good job with them. Um, so their numbers are a little bit higher. Even with this one in five, for one in five, it's important to note um, how the study was done. There's two questions I always get. One was this just listings, and yes, this was just listings on the MLS within a six month window. So if they weren't listed on the MLS, like they were a first time home buyer, or if they just weren't listed on the MLS for any reason, they're not included in this. They listed on day six months and six months and one day. They weren't in the study. And then people always catch excluded San Francisco and New York. Does not affect the product at all. We're, we have users in San Francisco. In fact, we have a lot of users in San Francisco, the greater San Francisco area, I should say, and in New York as well. The biggest issue was MLS data access. So in San Francisco's case, I believe there was a MLS or two that the data was proprietary and we couldn't access it. So we couldn't include it in the study. And then in New York, any of the New York City Realtors, realtors yeah. here will tell you that, you know, Manhattan. You know, yeah, it's, it doesn't <laughs> exist. <laughs> Does, no, it's not. It's not of any. It's not of any use to us for the for the study's sake. So it could not be included in there. Um, one more slide to kind of share with you, and that is our expectations. And I've hit this number a couple of times over this um, talking about expectations. We're wanting to reveal six percent of your database over the course of the year. J-Man's right in the bullseye. That's great. <laughs> Perfect placement. That's, uh, that's what we want to focus on, though, this bullseye approach. So rather than just shooting a, you know, a whole quiver of arrows hoping that one of them hits the bullseye, we can take a, a much more precise approach. We can give the okay. Let's say you have, you know, the average agent has 500 people in their database. So let's say 
you know, between you and your friend that's on your team, you have, you know, a thousand contacts. We're going to reveal 6% of them as very likely movers, right? So that would be, you know, from a thousand contacts, we narrow it down to 60. So all of a sudden, you've taken this giant database and narrowed it down to the top 60 people. That's who you're going to focus on over the course of the year. Those are going to be your top leads, your top prospects. You can put the majority of your effort into those contacts for every dollar you're spending on your database for brand awareness and for just keeping in front of people. You can spend 10 on these because you know that they're going to net you success at least one out of five times. Imagine picking up the phone to call these every five calls. You got someone on the hook already. I, I, I feel comfortable saying that's probably higher than your normal cold calling success rates. I've done a lot of cold calling. Um, my first job was cold calling eight hours a day off Craigslist. I learned a lot of new words, uh, none of which I'll repeat on here. <laughs> right. not, it, is not a, it is a thankless job, but we don't have to do it that way anymore. We have this data available to us. We have these tools available to us, and that is what's important to realize. Um, presentation wise, that's all I have for us, but you know, I'm happy to answer any, you know, questions for you, Jamie, or anyone that pops up with them as well. Uh, yeah, let's, um, so one, one thing that I, I just wanted to kind of reiterate, you guys just heard one in five. And so we're, we're going to be launching the J-Man's Lister Predictor. You can go to GetSellersNow.com. GetSellersNow.com. I couldn't believe that URL was available, but it is. I know. I was like, so good. I saw that. I was like, there's no way he got that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know, one of those things, you're just typing it in, you go, oh, wow. Okay, uh, shopping cart right away. Where, but, uh, yeah. but one out of five. So if you're monitoring 500 contacts and you're paying – 1200 bucks a year or whatever that price might be one out of five of those so that's in the possibility of 100 listings out of that database i think it's the best return on investment you could you know if you come to me and say hey i was thinking about putting my face on a billboard or a bus stop or a shopping cart or anything else first i'm going to slap you virtually <laughs> and i tell you like data data is the future but we we have a Another question from, so my cousin, um, this is my cousin Victor that keeps asking all the questions, the one that's in Costa Rica, but he comes from a software, he's, he's cool, but he's very nerdy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that out loud. Uh, he says, a lot of my leads are Canadians fleeing the frigid cold for the tropics. Does the accuracy pertain to Canadians as well, or is it just the U.S. market? That's a good just question. Just the U.S. market. So um, the way, you know, these data laws work, um, it's difficult for Privacy us to, laws. yep, it's difficult for us to do anything with that. Now, with that being said, we do have some users that, you know, are based in Canada, but their contacts are in the American market. Um, and that's totally fine. It doesn't matter where you're based, um, but it's going to be monitoring these American contacts simply, you know, to put it simply, just because of the privacy issues and the, you know, the data laws, there are, they differ from country to country. It's just, it would be a nightmare trying to get, I wish I've asked multiple times how we can do it. And short of, you know, becoming one giant country, I'm not sure how that would be, how that would be, you know, you, you can imagine it's a lot more difficult to get data from China than it is from the United States or from, you know, Russia than the United States. It's just, there's differences in each country. So good question. Yeah, that is. That is a good question. Well, Victor, we'll tell you who from the United States is moving to Costa Rica. Um, you know, I don't think the Canadians should see all the good real estate there. Save us some. Yeah. Uh, what, what about best practices? I guess that, that might be something important to talk about before we hop off because I, I know you have to get to an important appointment for your future son. Um, yeah. Like, you mentioned it. Like, you're not going to pick up the phone and go, Ian, buddy. Heard you getting a divorce. What's up? You know, like, what What have you heard from agents who have been using this? What are good ways for, I mean, my thought and my method is just to call and have a conversation, see where it leads you. And, mm -hmm. and then it will eventually come up because just like you said, they're going to be like, wow, it's funny that you called. Almost every single person will probably say that after a while, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. So it's important to know two things. One, you want to meet these people where they're at. And to be frank, we don't know where they're at the moment. So I use myself as an example uh, because I think I'm a pretty normal consumer. I respond to ads on a number of different mediums, just depending on where I'm at. So 
I'm surfing Facebook, a Facebook ad would be really good to reach out to me because I'm on Facebook at that time. I happen to be going through emails and I see a subject that just is clickbaity enough that it catches my attention. I'm going to go for that. Now, maybe it's a text message that happens to come to me when I have my phone in front of me. I'm going to go for that. We don't know which one is going to work at which time. So, A, it's important to always remember to put yourself out there in a number of different mediums to ensure that you're meeting them wherever they're at in that space. And then, B, you know, the second thing, while we're not going to, you know, encourage you to say, don't reach out and say, hey, sorry about the divorce. Sorry about the death. Sorry about the Sorry about the new kid. I guess you could say. <laughs> <laughs> sorry for your luck, man. No. <laughs> um, there's a couple of things to note about those life events is that they're obviously stressful. They're time consuming. They take up a lot of mental bandwidth and having to add on where am I going to live in six months is just something that they shouldn't have to worry about. So you really are that helping hand, that person that's going to guide them through the entire process. And that applies to what that applies to all of these life events, whether they're retiring, whether they're having a change in their job, a change in their family, a change in their life. You can guide them through that entire process and you can really lean into that idea that, hey, I am really here to help you to take just one last thing, one more thing off of your plate during this trying time. Now, our users use a wide variety of marketing methods, everything from we do have cold callers who are really good at it and more power to them. They're great and they can do it. They also have people who automate just about everything. They send out these fit really, you know, really nice Facebook um, custom audience advertising campaigns. Oh, so about Google this. PPC, yeah. Yeah. Um, direct mail. We have people that use bomb bomb for video emailing. I mean, we have people that use just everything in between. They try a little bit of everything because like I mentioned, we don't know where that person's going to be at that specific moment. We just know that they need to hear from us. So we're going to do everything we can to get in front of them. Man, you, you're talking my love languages now when you said Facebook and video and bomb bomb. Mm -hmm. and, but it, it, it's such a good point. So on a daily basis, I could look at that list and go, all right, let's create a customized audience from these folks, right? Can you export right there from like, yeah. can you s segment and say, okay, I want these, the top, all of them, over 80, I would think. All of them yeah. over 88, create a customized audience, target them, but then also let's take their addresses and let's send them a direct mail piece. Yep. And Absolutely. also, you know, and then just any way that you can hit them now, it's like, wow, this is like, instead of sending your entire database a postcard that you guys are wasting your money on, just mm -hmm. focus on these folks, right? Here's what's, what we're doing. Here's any other marketing that you're doing, focus on the people that are most likely to convert. Man, this is a, this is a game changer for sure. Yep, absolutely. No, you're you're right on there. We have the ability on our dashboard to export these segmented lists or the entire list as well. If you're, you know, if you're on top of your game, you got a nice CRM that you're using, you'll be able to fully utilize the scores right into there as well, um, which can help with triggering automations and the like as well. So um, definitely can automate as much as you know as much as you're interested in. Yeah. Okay. I had another idea there. So you could like maybe set up a Zapier or something like that, where it's like, if this person reaches this, then export that. Oh man. Now we're talking. You, I mean, the sky is the, when it comes to Zapier, Zapier, everyone calls it something different. So funny. I just like um, to say Zapier. I, call, I, call, I call it Zapier because they're called Zaps, but Zapier feels more appropriate, but maybe, maybe you'll have to interview them and ask them. Once I think it's my, my Rochester accent, Rochester. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the gif or gif debate, I guess, is what it'll be. Yeah. Um, but the sky is the limit for those. There are so many automations you can set up where, okay, something as simple as a contact tick 80. From that 80, it could export the list, send a postcard, send a ringless voicemail through Zap. It could send you know, all of these things, put in a spreadsheet. It could send a love note to your wife. I don't know. It could probably do that, too, if you ask Zap your no, <laughs> but bottom line being, it can trigger all of these things, and it just yeah. gets the mind churning of how many different things you can set up. Well, uh, I appreciate you, sir. Let me give you a round of applause again. Of course, thank you very much.